Hello. Um, no silly intro today, which is annoying because that's normally actually part of the plan, which will you know make more sense in a few weeks' time, hopefully. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who supported, I suppose, the launch of the Doug A. James channel um, and the new video we just got up there from last Sunday's video. Ben mentioned it and a bunch of you came over and showed your support and we're just, you know, quite nice all over, which is great because we're often reminded of how kind and supportive you guys can be. Um, and I thought this time we'd at least say thank you because it was very nice and uplifting and supportive and all those lovely things um not sure what else to say Starting off the news this week, a new planet has been discovered orbiting a white dwarf star 2000 light years away from Earth this planet is slowly losing its atmosphere to the star it's orbiting, leaving behind an identifiable trail. It's estimated that it's pulling in 3,000 tonnes of atmosphere every second, and the researchers say that this study is crucial because it helps predict the future of our own solar system, as it's the first piece of evidence that shows planets can survive the death of their star, as a white dwarf is what many stars, such as our own, become after their death. Previously, it was widely believed that the death of a star, when it becomes a red giant, could destroy all of the planets in the system, but these recent observations have shown that planets have the capability of surviving the red giant phase of their star's existence. In other news, artificial neurons have been developed at the University of Bath. These chips could be placed inside the brain and could, with further development, treat brain diseases like Alzheimer's. Professor Elaine Nogarrett said that their work was paradigm changing because of its ability to reproduce the electoral properties of real neurons in minute detail. It certainly is exciting news for those researching cures for neurodegenerative diseases. Starting off this week's paleontology news is the incredible discovery of a remarkably complete new genus and species of pterosaur. This is actually the most complete specimen of these flying reptiles known from the entire Afro-Arabian continent, coming from an exceptional late Cretaceous age deposit in Lebanon. Named Mimodactylus lebanensis, it's been found to be closely related to a Chinese taxon, and as such a new clade of derived toothed pterosaurs containing this new animal has been erected, Mimodactylidae. This discovery also fills in a notable gap in the pterosaur fossil record, as before now only very fragmentary fossils of pterosaurs were known from the Afro-Arabian continent, but clearly this is a beautifully preserved specimen. Next up, we've got some more Mesozoic archosaurs this week, and this time it's a dinosaur. Originating from the early late Cretaceous aged rocks in Argentina, it has been named Trachosaurus coei, and is classified as a new genus of South American basal abelosaurid. The fossil remains attributed to this new taxon are comprised of a maxilla, a distorted pelvic girdle, and back, tail, and hip vertebrae. Trachosaurus was much smaller in size than other abelosaurid dinosaurs, such as Abelosaurus and Carnotaurus, and as such it seems this animal was occupying a different niche to those larger carnivores. And finally, a new genus and species of dinosaur has been named this week too. Found in Upper Cretaceous rocks in Ecuador, this has been recognised as a new kind of titanosaurian sauropod, named Yamanosaurus logiensis. Part of the hips, tail vertebra, and some limb bones are known from this animal, and it was found that this new- It's okay, I dropped my iPad with the script on it. I'm gonna keep that in, alright? Anyway. <laughs> Part of the hips, tail vertebra, and some limb bones are known from this animal, and it was found that this new species is closely related to Nucoensaurus, being the northernmost saltosaurine known to science so far. One other thing I'd like to quickly mention before the video ends is that we are changing our logo. Not now, um, probably in the new year, but the reason we're mentioning this is because we don't want anyone to buy the merch with the current logo on it and then suddenly be disappointed. Although we will keep the current logo merch available if some people prefer that logo or still want to have that, you know, on their t-shirt. Just a kind of heads up. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this week's Seven Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it. Thank you again so much for your support and we'll see you on Sunday.